freedom in Summerhill, my school, is doing what you like so long as you don't interfere with somebody else. My father was a village schoolmaster in Scotland, and I spent 12 years teaching in state schools, so I know something about them. So I started, thought I'd start a school of my own, and uh, this happened in 1921. It's a long time ago. And I started a school then where I said, now children will be free to be themselves. And let me elaborate that, you see. We've tried for generations to make teach people how to live by religion, by morals, by politics. And there's been a, well, you only look around on the sick world today and you see it hasn't been much of a success. And one thing has never been tried and that's freedom. So I thought I must have a school where children are free, where their characters are molded, where they're free to live their own lives without license. <coughs> Put it concretely, if a boy doesn't want to study mathematics, it's nobody's business. If he wants to play a drum when other people are sleeping or studying, that's everybody's business. That's not allowed. So the first thing about the school was we do freedom without license. The second thing was that no child in humanity ever has enough play. It's shoved into a school when it's five or seven or whatever it is, sitting at desks and having a small playground. No child has enough play in life. No childhood is playhood. So I thought I'll have a school where children will be free to play as long as they like. They can play for 12 years if they want to. Knowing quite well that the child gradually would come to associate play with work. But we didn't associate the two together. We didn't try to make play, to use the play for studying mathematics or something like that, huh? which I think is quite unfair. So that's the second point about my school, that the child can play as long as he likes. And to be free, you must be free in all ways, so that we have no compulsory lessons. You don't need to go to lessons in Summerhill, you can stay away for years. No teacher ever says you should go to lessons. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't uh, want to boast at all, but I think our results in these years have been pretty good. We've had quite a few university lecturers, we've got doctors, lawyers, uh, no teachers. I think we've only uh, had very few people wanted to be teachers. I think uh, uh, quite wise, I think. <laughs> I think teaching is in your doses, but still I'm a teacher. However, they were completely free to do what they liked, to play as long as they wanted. And the result was when they came to work, they could do in two years you could pass exams in, exams in two years, where there might have been five or six years at an ordinary school, cramming stuff they didn't believe in, they didn't like. So that's the three points of Summerhill, freedom to be yourself, to not molded, freedom to play, and uh, freedom in, in general. <laughs> Now, you can't abolish authority in a community. You must have some law. I mean, some people can't ride on the left and some on the right. So having abolished adult authority, uh, we have a community ruling. We meet on a Saturday night, the youngest and the oldest, everybody, and we make laws. And that's called self-government, and they make quite sensible laws. I'd, I'd love not to close. I'd like to ask people to stop throwing milk bottles all around the place after they've finished. Take them back to the shop. They bought their milk bottles. Especially Peter Dogan. Can't we just ask Peter to return the milk bottles to the place where he buys them from? Because they need them, I think. And I, I second that. And um, for all the other people as well, like Fair and Tubby and Johnny who buy milk from that lady. I don't. You do. 
Well, I'm not going to speak about our lessons and things because we've, we've no new ways of teaching subjects. Mainly, I think, because we don't think it's subjects important enough. In his days, we give him wicked schemes. Wickedly scheming, he would limp and cackle through the cold corridors of the castle, planning new impossible feats for the suitors of Sarah Linda to perform. He didn't wish to give a hand in marriage, since her hand was the only warm hand in the castle. Even the we don't attach... Uh, very much importance to academic education. We attach importance to living, being balanced, being free, being charitable, being tolerant. One or two parents grumbled to me that Summerhill makes the children too tolerant. I'm very glad. The biggest compliment I ever had in my life, I think, was a little boy of seven who came and he went home for a holiday and his granny asked him all about the school and he told him what they played at and so on. And then she said, is there anything else to tell you? He thought for a bit. He says, yes, there's a chap called Neil there. I thought that was a very nice compliment. I needn't describe what to do in pottery and art and things like that. You can get that in any school. But what you do get with three children is a tremendous sincerity and the tolerance of other people. You get a lot of charity like that. I can't imagine any old summer hill pupil being anti-Semitic or being anti-color or anything like that. Well, that would apply to lots of schools, I know that. And it is a delight to see the effect of freedom on children. I've seen people again and again coming here hard-boiled, hating everybody, and in a few years they were nice, quiet, social people. There's, you see, there's no hope in hate. You can't cure anything by punishment or hate. That's why our criminal code is so barbarous and stupid and unchristian, if you like to call it that way. You can't do it. You can only cure by love. And if a child isn't loved in its cradle, so to speak, it's handicapped its whole life. The worst problems I've ever had are children who weren't loved as, as babies. And uh, I see no other way of curing humanity by anything but love. It's much more easy for us in the school to deal with children than a woman, for example, trying to cook the dinner and two or three children sprawling about and getting in her way. That's very difficult compared with the school. But generally speaking, too many parents spank their children. Now, I think it's absolutely easy to bring up a child without spanking it at all. After all, if you spank a child, you, it's being so unfair. You should hit somebody your own size. Take a child who's lying, for example. Now, a free child never lies. It doesn't need to lie. Because people, children lie because they're afraid. They lie, of course, an exaggeration, just as we all do. They see a funeral and they say, Mother, I've seen ten funerals today. That's okay. That's a budding novelist or a budding TV person. But still, uh, lying shouldn't come in. If a child lies to you and you parents, uh, there's something wrong with you. I wrote in one of my books, there isn't such a thing as a problem child, there's only a problem parent. But I qualified that by saying, well, more like, or through, more truly, that uh, there's only a problem humanity. And another thing I object to in, uh, with grown-ups and parents is obedience. I don't think there should be obedience. If, if you have obedience, you should have a, a mutual obedience. I never ask a child to obey me, and a child doesn't ask me to obey him. Why should they? We exploit children, really. We shouldn't do it. I want to, I'd like to see schools abolish this idea that all this square root and this rubbish that you never use is education, because it isn't. I want to abolish that altogether. And I want to see teachers becoming really interested in freedom for the child and not imposing their own ideas of morality and all these stupid things about headmasters chucking at boys because they're wearing blue jeans. What sort of people are these? I mean, I want people to be wide and broad in the outlook in dealing with children. It will come. It's coming slowly, but uh, I mean, 30 years ago, things are much worse than they are today. There's much more freedom in state schools today, for example, especially in the infant department. But the future I'd like to see would be, as I said, the knocking down all the barrack schools and building bungalow schools in the country. But that's a, an outward thing. The inward thing is an important thing. 
to have teachers who believed in, in child psychology and not the, in all that bunk about quadratic equations and square roots and things. I've never done a square root in my life, by the way, since I left school. And uh, trained at the training college primarily in psychology, not the, the wrong psychology, I want dynamic psychology, dealing with things, behavior problems like stealing or lying or whatever it is. The next question is one more for the home than the school. I personally believe that people should have a sex life when they want it, when they're ready for it. But you can't practice that in the school, and uh, not in this civilization anyhow. And our attitude to sex is simply, there's nothing sinful about sex, there's nothing evil about it. And uh, that's about all, and we don't give, give children any ideas that there's to be guilty about sex in any way. I'd like, I don't know what the future is, but I'd like to see it that way. But the children were completely free to go to lessons or stay away. After all, the lessons matter in life. And completely free to make their own laws and things like that. I'd like to see that. I don't know if it'll ever come. I want to live long to see. I wish I could. I wish I could live another 50 years or a thousand years to see it, but I don't think it shall. Mm -hmm.